Ask the expert. Ask the expert. Ask the expert. They'll know what to do. Ask the expert. Ask the expert. Ask the expert. They'll know what to do. Hello and welcome to Ask the Expert, an online video series hosted by the Rediscovery Centre. I'm Ed from the Rediscovery Centre. I'm not actually in the centre right now. We've taken things online at the moment. But as the National Centre for the Circular Economy, one of the many things that we do is we demonstrate and educate around repair, reuse, upcycling. And we do this through lots of different ways, like having courses, workshops and running seminars, but also by answering the questions that are sent in to us. Um, we get a lot of questions that uh, are actually quite similar. So we thought if we answered some of those questions online, it might help out more than just the person asking the question. So today we're going to focus on furniture. And our expert today is our program manager for Rediscover Furniture. He finesses the fiddle and he fixes furniture. It's Ger Griffin. Are you there, Ger? Yes, Ed. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Um, Ger, you, you've been um, uh, restoring furniture for how long now? A long, long time, Ed. It's uh, 42 years since I started my apprenticeship. And, 42 uh, years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And is there any pieces that jump out um, off the top of your head of a very, very special uh, piece? I'm sure there's loads, but is there, there any are. particular that, that jumps out as the, the first thing to pop into your head that was an amazing piece of work? Well, one of, one, one of, the, the, one of the, the things that, uh, certainly here in the Rediscovery Centre that I was asked to do was to repaint a chair and a desk for the client. And I said, no problem, of course, send it up, send the photographs first. When I saw the photographs, I said, whoa, uh, something nice here. Uh, let's not just uh, immediately paint this. Um, and uh, I asked the client to bring the, they brought the items in. We had a look at them, very special chair, um, I thought at the time. Uh, and then with the help of a client, uh, sorry, a colleague here, uh, Martha Sparius, a Dutch lady, um, she did a bit of research on it for me. Um, on the on the on the web and we found that it actually was dutch it was made in holland uh, in the 30s there were 200 of them made and the last one sold for three and a half thousand euro in in um in the states so uh, painting it was not the correct thing to do so uh, we we conserved it instead we uh, repaired it conserved it gave it back to the client and that that it was a standout one for the rediscovery center the desk was a beauty as well the desk was scottish uh, from you could trace it back to the old Macintosh uh, factory. Uh, it was an offshoot of the Macintosh factory. Uh, not terribly valuable, but uh, a nice history with it as well. Uh, and all these things are, you know, they've they've it's, they have a story. The uh, and that's the nice thing about working in this trade. Uh, nearly every piece has a story to it, uh, uh, you know, which is great. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and we've got some stories for you today, Jared. Thanks very much for agreeing to take part in this. We've You're asked welcome. our followers on Facebook. Um, and um, and Twitter and uh, through the website to send in some questions um, which you are going to try and um, uh, help them with now. Um, so some of these questions I'm sure are questions that you get all the time and um, so hopefully we're, we're going to be able to help out a few more people um, than just Rita from Dunboyne for example who's the first person here who's asked a question. Okay. Now she has uh, sent in a, a picture here of a sideboard and she said yes. I have this sideboard in my house for about 40 years it's a solid piece of furniture and it's in it's in my sitting room. I do love it. It has a bit of wear and tear, especially on the top. I think it could do with being refinished. I'm reluctant to do it myself as I'm afraid of ruining it. Do you think I can sand it down myself and revarnish it or should I leave it to the experts? What do you think, Ger? Uh, this is, I think this is, a, is, a, is one that if, the, if, the, if uh, Rita, is it Rita? From, yeah. From, that if, if Rita has enough patience uh, and elbow grease, that uh, she could do this, she could tackle this one herself. Uh, it looks to me to be a, a Dutch import. Um, there we go, more, more, more furniture from Holland. But this one was a much later one, uh, probably 1980s uh, import. It's solid oak, which is great. It means that you can't do an awful lot wrong with it. Um, the indication to me are, the, are the, the, the fittings, as in the hinges and the handles, uh, give it away to me, and also th uh, that, it's, that it's a foreign import. Uh, and also the uh, the carving on the on the on the panels and the doors. Um, as I say, it's, it's solid oak. A great a great thing to start with. It's a big item. The um, by all means she can she can strip it. It'll turn out a much lighter colour than it is at the moment. 
uh, if she's looking for that um, uh, result. Uh, but there are plenty of water-based, um, eco-friendly paint removers uh, on the market. And um, the, that's probably how we would tackle it here in the workshop if she, if she so, so required. Uh, but it's something that she could do herself. Um, as I said, the, the, the instructions are, are on, the, are on the, uh, the products themselves to use. But a, a small tip is that um, if you apply the water-based paint remover, uh, it does evaporate relatively quickly and it takes quite a bit of it to, to, to activate, not like the, the, the old, more hazardous uh, uh, paint strippers that we used in the past. So if she applies the, the, uh, the paint stripper, I suggest that she either covers it with, with newspaper uh, or plastic sheeting, uh, even like an old bin liner that can, you can cut it up uh, and, uh, and cover it. It's to prevent the water-based uh, paint remover from evaporating too quickly. Uh, it, it, because you know the nature of it, it, it just will evaporate very quickly. Uh, so to delay that, by all means, cover it with either newspaper or, or plastic. Um, and that'll speed up the process. There's a lot of work in it, um, in, in the, a lot of labor. Uh, I, I have done videos before uh, of, of, of stripping items. Uh, I, the might be still on our website. Um, the, you use a, coarse, a very coarse wire wool, Another thing as well, be careful with the wire wool, make sure and cut it with a scissors. Uh, don't pull it through your hands because it'll cut you like cheese wire. The worst cuts I've got in the workshop have been from wire wool, believe it or not. Not from chisels or, or planes or anything like that. Wire wool, believe it or not. So use a very coarse wire wool, uh, good heavy duty gloves. As I said, the instructions are on the, are on the containers. Um, so you just follow the instructions that they recommend. That's a little tip about uh, putting the plastic or the newspaper on. Another wee tip as well, if we were doing it in the workshop, we would remove all the handles, we would remove the doors, um, take them off, work on them separately, uh, um, as in on a, on a bench or a table somewhere else, rather than trying to do them uh, in situ. That's, it's very awkward to try and, uh, and, um, and strip items that are still constructed. So remove the handles, remove the hinges, take the doors off um, and work on them separately. But as I say, she has a, um, her work cut out for her there. And when you say she has her work cut out for her, um, time-wise, what, what are we talking here? Because uh, <laughs> um, a big job for you and a big job for yeah. me. Might be yeah. different how, long is it, how long is a piece of string, Ed? Exactly, the, yeah. The, the, uh, if, if she has the time, she would do this, I'd say, in a probably, okay, about two months. Wow, two yeah, months. Yeah. I don't, uh, for, for, an, for a novice, uh, for a novice person, uh, this is a big, big item to tackle. Um, uh, I know this is, of course, if she's stripping the, the, the entire item, not just the top. Uh, if she's stripping the drawers, the doors, which I would recommend she does, because if she strips the top alone, it'll end up a completely different color to the, to the, uh, to the body of the, um, of the piece. Uh, if you stripped off the top alone, it would end up as a very light colored timber, as naturally as oak is. Um, and, the, and the front you can see is, is quite red uh, in comparison. So I would suggest that she strips the entire item. Okay, and so how many layers are we talking then once it's stripped and she's revarnishing? How many layers? Uh, uh, do, you, do you mean of, of, to revarnish? Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's two or three coats to revarnish. The, 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 and the revarnishing of it is uh, the least of it. Right. Absolute, absolutely the least of it. That's the, that's the easy the, part. That's the easy part. Yeah, the, the biggest, most difficult part of it is the preparation, which is the, which is the stripping and paint removing. Uh, and that's, uh, it's a, it can be a labor of love. It's, 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 it's you know, it's very, it's very satisfying work uh, because, you know, when you see, when you see it uh, cleaning up, you know, you have the top half clean and, the, you know, then you finish out. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very satisfying work. But um, don't be, don't underestimate what you're taking on there. Okay. And I guess... To take on a project like this, you really got to be invested in it. You know, you have to have your heart in in a job like this. Um, but it's worth it in the end. Absolutely, yes, yes. From 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 various perspectives, it's, it's, you know, you're keeping something that you that you like, uh, and also the uh, you're not going to replace this item with um, with a with a version uh, that's out there because it's not out there. The uh, um, so you like you know you go around the shops, uh, you're not going to replace it with an equivalent. Uh, this is a solid oak uh, um, item from, let's say, it was Dutch import probably, uh, and uh, it's good quality. 
So it's, it's, worth, it's worth saving, certainly. Okay, Jared. let's move on to our second question. It comes in from John in Cabra. He sent in a picture of a glass cabinet here. He said he inherited this glass cabinet from his mother. It does have sentimental value, but it's a little dated. He's thinking of painting it himself so it matches the rest of the furniture in the house. Yeah. Now, would he ruin this if he repainted it himself? And, and if he does repaint it, what kind of paint should he be using? Yeah, the, this, is, this is a good one. The, uh, we've painted lots of these uh, cabinets in the past. Um, so it's, it's something that we're very familiar with. It gives them a completely different look uh, and a new lease of life. It's nice to know that it's of sentimental value, so it's great to be able to keep it. Uh, you're not going to ruin it. Uh, any work that you do can be undone. Uh, so don't be afraid, like, you know, if, if another generation, if it's passed on to another generation and they want it back to polished timber as it is, uh, it, the paint can be, can be removed. So don't be, don't be afraid of, of uh, you know, using your own expression to, 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 to retain it. Um, what would he say? Um, yes, the, the, uh, the, the, a lot of these were made um, in, 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 the, in the past. Uh, like everybody's house had a, had a china cabinet. If you remember your, your granny's house had them, they were very common. The thing to watch out for is woodworm. The, um, they were made in an era before they had treated plywood. Uh, I could fairly guarantee you that the base of this is plywood uh, and that the legs are probably beech, both of which are very susceptible to worm. They love them. The, uh, so my first instinct would be to uh, put it up somewhere, have a turn it upside down, have a good look at the, of course, take the shelves out first, there are glass shelves in it. The, uh, the, uh, have a good look at the, uh, at the base and at the legs to see that there are any, are there any wormholes. Um, if there are, you, sh you should be able to treat them for, for, for with, with woodworm killer. There are, you know, safe, safe to use woodworm killers out there. Um, the, and then you can set about painting it. The, you could follow the same procedure as with, with Rita, uh, as in, you know, to remove the finish with um, with um, paint remover, you don't have to in this instance because you're painting it. You can roughen up the surface with with some sandpaper, roughen up the polished surface with some sandpaper, um, and apply. You have to apply what's called a stain blocker um, to to it first because what happens is that when you use water based paints, nearly all paints now are water based. Uh, to, to, because they're they're more um, friendly uh, to the environment. So um, when you use water-based paints, a lot of the previous color and finishes leaches through the um, leaches through the paint. So um, that means that you know you get this dark staining of your of, of your paintwork, which is not really not acceptable. So what we generally do here in the workshop is we use what's called a stain blocker. There is a couple on the market. Um, there's one called Bin Zinzer. Uh, which is uh, very, very good, both in water-based uh, and methylated spirits-based, very quick drying. Uh, Fleet would make an, a good one as well called Terminator. Great name for, 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 for a product. Uh, called uh, the Fleetwood Terminator, uh, another good one. And you apply that first, then you apply your undercoat. As I say, the first coat is a stain blocker. Very good. A good tip with those, with those stain blockers. If ever you get a stain on your ceiling, like you know, on a, on a, in a bathroom, or like you no, know, this is what they were invented for: was to actually stop those uh, stains occurring on your ceiling. Because if you paint, if you paint white emulsion over a ceiling stain, very often it appears again. It leaches the color leaches down through the through the the um, through the, the ceiling. So the um, you know you're recommended to apply a stain blocker over that. So it's the same thing. You're, you're just preventing the colour coming through the paint. Um, and so that's your first coat. Second coat is your, is, your, is, your, is your undercoat and then two coats of finish. You can apply, of course, you can apply two coats of undercoat uh, if, you, if, you, if you feel it needs it. Um, and, uh, and then more than likely two coats of finish. Sand between the coats. Very essential to, to sand lightly. Your first sanding is done with um, a coarse sandpaper, say grade number 120 would be what we would recommend. Uh, and then uh, subsequent sanding would be done with a, a fine grade of sandpaper, maybe around 220 um, between coats. Lightly, obviously, you don't want to be removing uh, paint uh, that, you, that, you, that, you're, that you've just applied. So, and another thing as well, uh, masking tape mask off the glass the um uh, you don't want to be clean, spending hours cleaning glass it's a pain the, the you've done all your paintwork 
And uh, with, with masking tape, I've I found out firsthand uh, not to buy the cheap stuff because the paper oh. leaks through it. So get a get a good quality one. Well, fair fair play to you. There, there there are a couple of um, little things as well on that. You if if you are going to do this job relatively quickly, uh, as in over a week or so, um, I would use I would use a, a regular masking tape, just a regular creamy white masking tape. It's, it's you know it's 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 good enough to do that. If this is going to be started and done over a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you're in a bit of difficulty then with your masking tape because it won't want to come off. Uh, it, it hardens in place. But there is a, a more extensive type of masking tape. There's a product, it's, it, it, a couple of the, the, um, of the bigger companies make a specific type of decorator's masking tape called low-tack tape. One brand name is Frog. Uh, frog tape. There are lots of others, um, but the, the, the thing to remember is it's low tack tape. It's specifically made for delicate surfaces, um, uh, and also it doesn't dry out and stick to the glass. So if you're if this project is going to take you uh, uh, a month to paint from this from the start, I would use a low tack tape on the glass. Otherwise, you're going to have a heartache trying to get that 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 uh, masking tape off after a month. Okay, very good, Joe. And uh, tell me this, uh, we have a couple of glass cabinets in the shop that have uh, come through your workshop, and yeah. I have to say the thing that stands out for me the most is actually the back. It's really, really oh. vibrant and colourful. What would your suggestion be here? Nice one, Ed. Yeah, sorry, I'd forgotten that. The, it's a massive, uh, a massive uplift to, uh, to a piece of to, to these items, is that you, you recover the back. The back is the back is plywood. It's 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 always plywood. So check it as I say. Check it for worm. Um, it, it's easy to replace if 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 it's um, if it does have worm in it. It's rel it's easy to replace it with a, with a sheet of, a, another sheet of plywood. Um, the I would I would cover it generally with either a wallpaper, a nice decorative wallpaper, uh, or else a, a fabric, a lightweight fabric. You can't obviously use a very heavyweight fabric because you'll see the threads around the edges. Um, but so it's either a lightweight fabric um, and or else a wallpaper. And also carry the carry the um, the wallpaper onto the floor of the cabinet. So yeah, so you're, you're covering the cabinet floor and the back. Uh, it, it makes a nice difference. Um, thanks for reminding me, Ed. No, that's no problem. And um, thanks to John in Cabra for sending that in. Um, I've certainly learned a couple of things there myself. Uh, so thanks very much for your time, Ger. Uh, we'll leave it at that for now. But okay. please come back tomorrow uh, and we'll take on another couple of questions. So Great. see you then. Thanks, Ger. Oh, you're welcome. Ask the expert. Ask the expert. Ask the expert. They'll know what to do. Ask the expert. Ask the expert, ask the expert, they'll know 